I thought that that 57 Heinz car was really cool. Um, great paint scheme, beautiful mm-hmm. paint scheme, just a well put together. It, it looked like it was going to be this really, really cool deal, yep. right? Everything yep. takes a while to get off the ground and get successful. And it didn't run awful out of the gate, you know, mm-hmm. um, but it just never got better. Right. Um, so what? When, when did you decide that you were going to make a change? I mean, how did you even find well, a new opportunity? Well, we run the whole 89 mm-hmm. season, missed a couple of races, missed, missed Daytona, and, um, I don't know, missed a few races, but anyway – um, you know, I've st- uh, kept, kept in contact with Rod. Uh, he said, you know, do I have a ride for next year? You know, if not, I need to be looking, you yeah. know, and, and tell me now, you know, nope, you got a ride. And I said, well, I said, well, what about my contract? You know, I'm going to send it to you. I'm going to send it to you. And make a long story short, uh, about four weeks before the Daytona 500, had friends call me. For 1989, for, for year for, two. For, for the, yeah, that, right. was, that was for – I run the 89 season. Okay, sorry, for year yeah. two, which is 90. That's correct. Yep. Yeah, 90. That's right. And uh, I got a uh, phone call from uh, my in-laws. said, hey, you know, you might need to check on this. said, you, you know, we've heard on the news that, that Osterlin announced that Spencer's going to be driving the car next year, the Heinz car. Mm-hmm. I said, really? Yeah, and he, he kept telling me, man, you, you know, you know, my, I'm going to send you your contract, and if my word ain't good enough, and I don't know what is, and I said, well, send it, you know, and – well, anyway, make long story short, it it was true. They pulled me out and put Spencer in the car, and I started the '90 season. Didn't have a ride, basically. You did, so you went to Daytona without a car to drive. Uh, that was what it was looking like. Yep. Uh, and then uh, I guess in um, uh, TriStar needed a, somebody to drive their car down there, uh, um, and I got in their car. Which car is that? That was the. Um, uh, I forget. Yeah, me too. Um, 68, I think it was. Number 68. Was uh, that the um, old? It was old. Country time? Uh, um, it was before country time. Okay. Um, but um, we ended up we ended up qualifying second round fastest there mm-hmm. um, in that car. Um, then, then we got into a, a Schrader, and somebody was in a 125 – coming to the coming to the finish he spun spun and he got me yeah yep. yeah yep. yeah and took me out and uh we was in the race and yeah just one of them things and uh so then i proceeded to, rick hendrick felt really bad so he brought one of the days of thunder movie cars over for us to use and uh we brought it over there it had no windows no no nothing you know no engine no transmission mm-hmm. so all the guys went, went, to to, went to work and Damn. got it in there and uh we ended up starting a daytona 500 in a and uh, one of the days of Thunder movie cars. Okay. And did y'all run the whole – was y'all free to race how y'all wanted to race? Or did they – because I know yes. those days those, those, those day the Thunder cars had a script. That's correct. They were going to do a certain thing and then get off the track. But they but Rick basically handed you to that car and said, y'all run the hell out of it. That's right. Yeah, what did you do? We had no restrictions. Yeah. Uh, of course, it was – it was uh, – it was uh, – Different. Yeah, yeah, I mean – It was it, a handful. It, it was yeah, a yeah you couldn't drive. I mean, it was just <laughs> – yeah. It was a movie car, you know. The body was what much. Wasn't better a Daytona than, car. No, no, no. It was, it was, and you can imagine. I mean, just everything was pieced together, and sure, you know, just a thrash. You I know, bet that. To get, yeah, I you bet know, that was yep. a bit frustrating. Yep. So, um, uh, hold up, Ken. Tra- we, you're saying that Rick did that out of just kind, yeah, kindness, empathy and yeah. just <clears throat> kindness. Well, so but but Ken Schrader didn't do anything malicious, did he? No, like, no, no, it was no, just, no. Um, I think it was more. Uh, I think Rick Hendrick would have done it. Whether whether Ken Schrader was involved or whatever, but you know what Ken was, uh, I guess he was coming to the finish line or something or towards the end of the race and now, got loose off four and yeah, uh, in, so, in the twenty five car he was driving it. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I remember that wreck, and uh, I remember the sixty eight car. He slid up in front of you and you kind of mm-hmm. you kind of t bone him there. Yep. And um, you ran for Rick in the spring Darlington race. And one of the days of Thunder's number mm-hmm. fifty-one cars. Um, you also got to work and coach Tom Cruise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. during the making of that movie. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm-hmm. so yeah. So, what was that experience like? Uh, pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know it. it um, uh, you know to be around that whole group. Uh, um, 
it was just it was I was in awe. How did you, how does that even happen? Like how, how did they come to you, or did you go to them um, and say I want to do that? N- no, uh, 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 Carolyn Carrier Freeman, um, her her dad owned Bristol Speedway at that time. Okay. <clears throat> she was the liaison for uh, NASCAR to the Days of Thunder people. Okay, uh, she had knew she knew. Um, knew me from racing and what have you, obviously. And, um, and she had told me, Hey, you know, we're needing somebody to go, you know, drive a few of these cars from time to time and go to the racetrack, uh, pays really good. And so I said, heck yeah, I ain't doing nothing. Let's go do it. So I did that for probably a couple months, something like that. Yeah. And so that was uh, made, your into the, into the movie scene there. And mm-hmm. then, and then you're probably one of only a handful of drivers that are actual race car drivers that is available to mentor, so to speak. Yeah, you know, we didn't. I'll tell you what, Tom Cruise could have made a heck of a driver. Really, uh, he what was. Made he, you say that. Uh, just his um, demeanor, his 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 focus. Uh, you know, he wanted to do things right. I mean, just and he wanted to do it. I mean, you know, there's no. I mean, I, I know why his movies are so successful. I mean, you mm-hmm. see how he is in person, just so focused and dialed in and. Um, you know, every scene he makes is, you know, it don't matter if it's on his 40th take, you know, it might have been right 30 takes ago, but, you know, no, I want to, I want to make it right. So and, when you're, when you're, when you're helping them with that film, is Tom actually driving race cars? Cause I know a lot of times they're filming with a car on a trailer, right? Well, He's propped up in this trailer, in this car on a trailer. And that's typically how you would film most scenes in the race car, but he did drive you you did go out to like mm-hmm. Volusia County and he did drive a race car and yep. you watched him you know understand really what that might, what that what that experience might be like because yep. I don't think I don't think mm-hmm. I ever knew till right now sitting across from you today that Tom drove a car around mm-hmm. the racetrack right mm-hmm. so you got to witness him do that yep that's pretty well, fascinating it was I you know I really couldn't believe that he was actually going to go out and do it. Yeah. Uh, and you thought and, he'd just be propped up in a movie car. Well, I thought so. Like in a prop, but, right? But no, he wanted to do it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when he went, when we, it was funny when we, well, not funny, but we went out in the, uh, got ready to go out and he was buckling in and all that stuff. And, and I was kind of walking around the car as I always do, just kind of look and make sure nothing's, you know, getting ready to fall off or, you know, yeah. all the lug nuts tight, hood pins in, you know, nothing. I looked always front suspension, anything like that anyway. So I walked around and tell Tom, I said, I said, now I'm going to warn you on something here. I said, I said, this car, they have a, a what they call a, a float and sway bar on it. I said, it's, it's, uh, it's attached on, on the right side only and the left side has a, has a, a rub pad. Yeah, it's a I clapper. Said, I said, I know it don't mean anything to you. I said, but you know, we, when you go out, I said, you can't turn the wheels to the right. You got to, you know, don't. When you warm your tires, go left and right. When you when you go left, you'll have a sway bar. When you go right, you won't have a sway bar. Mm-hmm. You know, it, so you really have to watch, or or you'll, you'll you'll wreck it. You know, so man, the first thing he does is roll out on a racetrack and makes one lap, and so then he comes down the front straightaway and he starts war- warming the tires up, and uh, immediately the car turns to the right. He's got a hundred thousand dollar camera sticking out the right side, about <laughs> ten foot you know, with a, on a pole and stuff, kills the right side camera, kills the right front of the car, yeah. everything. I mean, that was it. He comes in, he says, man, I see what you was talking about on that sway bar. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tried to tell you, you know, you, you have no bar when you go to the right. Was but, that yeah. the only time you ever saw him drive a race car? Uh, yeah, that was, that was a, that was the first time. Was, did he yeah. ever drive one after that? Yeah. Yeah. He did on the big track stuff. What? Uh, yeah. He, 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 he did, uh, he, he did drive Daytona, uh, you know, just yeah, just by itself type thing. Right. I think I heard Rick telling a story about him going out there and running some laps. You know, 170 mm-hmm. mile an hour or something like that. And Paul Newman maybe driving some laps yep. as well. Yep. In one of their test in one of their test cars from the early 90s or mid 90s. It's pretty fascinating. Yep. He's sort uh, yeah. of notorious for doing all his own stunts, anyways. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't know that he was that way back then. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's early 90s and stuff. I guess late 80s, early 90s, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not too surprised to hear that he would want to do that himself. Yeah, yeah, he would have he would have made a good race driver if he had yeah. ever, you know, a little bit of time. It wouldn't have took much time, but he was he was pretty ballsy. 
Hey, if you like that video, you'll love the entire podcast, the Dale Jr. Download. It's available on all major podcast platforms. 